Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a video on how I make my art prints. I know this video has been quite highly requested of you guys. I really really hope I can do it justice for you guys and you find it helpful somewhere. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, this is just how I personally do them in my studio and yeah there's different ways and different, oh I've just dropped my pad there, there's different ways and different techniques you can make your own art prints at home but this is just the way I do it. I also want to say a huge thank you today to Skillshare our sponsor and if you don't know Skillshare is an amazing online community full of creatives like yourselves, like me, whatever, uh, sharing their knowledge on things such as art prints. You can also get Skillshare class on how to create beautiful art prints and different art techniques, selling on Etsy. There's all sorts of amazing classes on there from thousands of creators and they are offering you guys two months free. So grab that while you can if you're interested in learning about how to build a business, an Etsy business or anything like that. Definitely go check out Skillshare for the two months free. I will leave a link in the description below for you guys to check out. I really really hope you like it. I enjoy using Skillshare and there's just so many amazing classes that you can check out so definitely check those out. So into creating art prints. I started creating art prints about three years ago when I opened my business and to be honest you can make it as expensive or inexpensive as you want it depends on your budget but there's a few things that you have to bear in mind first whether you're going to be selling digital work traditional work will depend on the type of equipment you have so obviously if you're going to be selling digital work you'll need somewhere to do your digital art and you won't need a scanner if you're doing traditional work and you want to sell prints of your traditional artwork then a scanner will be needed the printer that i actually use is the epsom 960 i absolutely love this printer uh this is actually my third art print printer when i first started catnip and etsy uh selling art prints on etsy i actually went through quite cheap printers but Epsom I always use because the ink quality and the print quality tends to be very good. I would just do your research. I know some artists use Canons uh, but the one I'm personally using at the moment for my art print is the Epsom XP960 which yeah I think is absolutely fantastic but if you're doing traditional work like I say you will need a scanner and the good thing about this printer is it actually has a flatbed scanner included. I know a lot of printers actually offer this feature now so it's something to bear in mind when you're investing in a printer. So yeah that's the printer that I've been using. You'll also need obviously some artwork and you will also need papers. The paper I'm actually using at the moment is the Epsom Archival Matte Paper. I will leave a link in the description below for you to check that out. Something to bear in mind when you're printing art prints is sometimes it takes trial and error. It took me quite a long time to get my print settings perfect to replicate the artwork how I wanted in terms of colour and everything like that. So you may have to go through some trial and errors and do some test prints to save on paper. I suggest doing little thumbnails of your prints and doing different settings and stuff just to go through it because it can be quite costly if you try and get the print settings right. There's a few different settings with different printer software that you might have to play around with and I know this took me quite some time but I'll show you the print settings I use for my printer and yeah hopefully this will be helpful so I'm going to show you my computer screen now and show you how I print off my art print. So here we can see my screen just here and this is a scanned in photo of a watercolour that I did Um, it's not the best watercolour that I've done but I'm just using it as an example for this video and basically I just use my computer software and I use my Epsom 9 60 scanner to scan this in you always want to make sure that you're scanning in 300 dpi minimum which is dots per inch to give that really crisp quality when you're printing I've actually put this on the canvas size ready so this is a 5 by 7 canvas size which is one of the art print settings that I actually offer in my Etsy store I'm thinking of actually changing this to A5 in the future but for now all that I offer in my Etsy store is A4 print and 5 by 7 because that's much easier for me I don't know why I picked those settings but I am thinking of actually increasing to A5 in the future so this is just a basic scan and as you can see you can see the flat bed scanner behind the watercolour paper here and what I do is I just go in with adjustments I've added some more colours over the top of here 
as you can see me clicking on the different layers these are all the adjustments I made to make the art print how I wanted it and in the end this is what it ended up looking like I changed the white balance I cleaned up things I added some brushes to certain parts of the painting and I cleaned up those sketch lines which you've seen in my scan I also use levels which you can find in image adjustment levels over here I actually have it set up on my Photoshop over here so you can see everything in this corner over here and I just yeah I adjusted the levels and the saturation to get it to how I wanted it to be now let's click over here which is one of my digital illustrations I actually illustrated this on procreate and I airdropped it to my Mac or you can send it to your Mac however you want to get it over there and I just adjusted it again this is on a 5 by 7 canvas with 300 dpi and I actually print in RGB I know some people print in CMYK but I actually print in RGB and I haven't found this to be an issue with my Epson printer I do know if you're sending prints off professionally if you want to get them printed at a shop then you may have to send them CMYK uh, which is just over here image mode and you can select which mode you want to change so you would click here you would click CMYK color but I am happy with how these prints turned out so now it is time to print them I actually pre-cut my Epsom archival paper and I cut them down to size prior to printing i know what you can do is set up a a4 sheet of paper or however big your paper is going to be and you can set up guides on photoshop um i know some artists work like this uh, but me personally i actually cut my paper down to size because my printer offers borderless printing which works out absolutely fan fine for me so now it's on to printing this art print so i'm going to go over click file print and i'll show you my print settings so here I've clicked print you can see I've actually got a lot of different settings here and this was all trial and error from things that I found worked for my prints in general depending on the printer the paper and everything you use it will vary so you do have to do some test prints and things like that to make sure you get the perfect print but I found this works for me the settings for 5x7 or I also have a4 borderless this printer actually prints a3 but I don't offer that just yet in my Etsy store but for now we're going to print a 5x7 borderless premium semi-gloss setting this is the settings that I have I have it feeding from the photo tray there is three photo trays I believe on this printer one in the back to feed larger items and thicker cardstock and a photo tray and a bottom A4 tray um, that you can use but I use the photo tray for the 5x7s and I use the bottom tray for the A4 prints so that both trays are loaded and it makes it really quick and efficient for me to print out because I actually make to order all my art prints and I have it on media type photo semi gloss paper it doesn't actually offer me the archival ink paper that I actually use despite using actual Epson paper but I find that the best media type is the photo semi gloss paper for me I also always have my quality on best as you can see I've got low ink please ignore that guys and then I'm just gonna go ahead and print this And this is a final result it's a beautiful quality print uh, the dots per inch are fantastic on this printer I absolutely love the quality and it always turns out great every time after a few trial and errors so next up what you can do this is additional is I actually clip the corners of my art print this is just a stylistic choice you don't have to do this not many people do this but I kind of found this from conventions and stuff a lot of artists actually did use to clip the corners and I like to have those slight corners uh, clipped and this is the result little clip corners I, I just like the way it looks it is just a stylistic choice you don't have to do this to your art prints. Next up I want to show you how I protect my prints during shipping I actually add one of these mount boards or grey boards as they're called to the back of my art prints 
This is actually an A5 size and as you know my art print is 5 by 7 so what I tend to do is I tend to cut it slightly bigger than 5 by 7 just so that the paper doesn't overlap the edges, the art print doesn't overlap the edges and it bends the art print during packaging so I do do it slightly bigger than 5 by 7 and then I package it in a cellophane sleeve. You can purchase these cellophane sleeves on things like Amazon, eBay and just have a look on Google in general if there's any local supplies in your area. You can also get some new cellulose or uh, potato starch sleeves if you're looking for a more environmentally friendly option, uh, which I believe Eco Crafts supply. But it just ensures that the art print is waterproof during the transit because I actually use hardback card envelopes uh, to ship my art prints to my Etsy customers. So adding that sleeve is quite vital to protect the art print itself from any water damage that might occur. A little extra touch, I just add a little bit of my washi tape to the back of the art print just to make sure it's securely fastened. And it also just adds a nice little cute finish. So yeah. That's basically it, that's how I package my art prints. and sell my art prints. I really enjoy my Epsom 960. It uses Claria inks which according to Epsom can last up to 300 years which is classed as archival if it's obviously properly protected in a photo album with archival sleeves and things but obviously I just want my prints to last a very long time. So that's why I enjoy using Epsom inks uh, especially the Claria range. I would definitely look into different ink types for different printers. Uh, I would definitely do your research into printers and different inks and things. There is better printers on the market than mine. Mine does me perfectly fine. I absolutely love my printer and yeah I'm really really happy with it. I've had it for around a year and a half, two years now and yeah I have no plans on changing it unless it conks out and dies. So really happy with my printer. I also use archival paper to go with the inks just to make sure that my prints last as long as I can. You don't have to use archival paper. Do your research about different paper types. That's just personally what I like to use. I am actually going to experiment with some new paper stock that I've found which hasn't arrived just yet so although I am using the Epsom archival paper from today it is subject to change. I am always trying new paper. One paper that I used to use especially when I was on a budget was blue diamond canvas paper that has a texture to it and I absolutely loved the quality of those prints but as I kind of grew and I could invest more into paper stock I went to the Epsom archival because that's personally what I liked on my artwork it reproduced my artwork just how I wanted it if you do watercolors you may look into getting watercolor type paper um, for inkjet printers bearing in mind not just watercolour type paper but specifically for inkjets, Hammer Mule, I think it's Hammer Mule, I can't pronounce that name, but they do a range of photo rag papers and things like that which can offer a beautiful quality print. But that is just personally what I use. If you don't have a scanner, you can also use a DSLR camera, make sure it's in natural lighting without any shadows cast. Uh, just to save uh, money if you already have access to a DSLR camera or a very very high quality camera you can experiment with that. You don't necessarily need a, a scanner. Specifically if you do really huge art pieces then a DSLR camera is, might be what you need to use anyway or a camera in general that does really really high quality photos. Don't forget that when you're shipping prints you want to make sure that the prints are protected on the journey to the customers. You don't want it to get bent and squished. 
I actually use paper backed envelopes that offer that nice stiffness and um, so that when they're in the post they don't get bent and I also put that backing card underneath my print just for double protection to make sure it gets to them in time. I really really hope you found this video helpful thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video definitely go check out those two free classes if you want to learn more things I've just got so many things you can learn from so thank you very much for watching I hope you found this helpful if you have any tips for selling art prints definitely leave it in the comments below how do you use things use different techniques for your art prints let people know help each other out and yeah good luck guys have fun creating your own art prints i'll see you very very soon thank you so much for watching okay then i'll see you soon love you goodbye